Hey everyone, super excited to be here with you. I'm Nidika Behel, the author of the international best-selling book, The Queen of the Comeback, and a celebrity life coach. And welcome to the season one, episode one of India's biggest comebacks. I'm sure you're wondering what this show is all about and what is the history why this show has been created. Well, just to share a little bit about me, uh, some of you know me, of course, and some of you probably are meeting me for the very first time. Um, as I shared, I'm Nadika Behel, and I, uh, you know, fought clinical depression for almost six years of my life, was completely vegetated and told that I may never, ever, ever be able to come back to leading a normal life, but I did. And when I, in that journey of kind of bouncing back that is a time when um, you know I took help with a lot of self-help books and a lot of motivational videos that I saw to make a turnaround for myself and when I did um, you know I kind of discovered a new purpose of my life which is you hurt you heal and you help and from that energy in that you know when I used to lie on that bed thinking that one day I will get normal I used to always dream about having my own talk show where I can interview people from their comebacks uh, you know the the down times in their life that they have uh, surpassed and you know they've come back to life and are leading wonderful beautiful lives and that's how the birth of this show happened in my head at that time and I'm so excited that it's uh, actually taken shape today and we're going we're going to be doing our first episode and uh, another thing which is very special for me today is it's 17 September. Last year on this day I launched my book and uh, during the time of the book launch I was asked uh, by one of my very close friends and also somebody who I wrote about in my book Mr. Suren Jaisekar and he asked me Nidika what's your future plans and I told him before uh, one year has passed by from the book launch I'm going to be having my own talk show so today is extremely special for us because it's 17 September 2018 and we are rolling our first episode here. So, um, you know, I'm very excited, um, of course, for the launch and, of course, very humbled and honored to introduce to you our first guest on this show. He's an amazing, amazing human being, uh, you know, from all the interactions I've had with him and all the research that I've been doing about him over, over the last few days uh, to be able to have a meaningful conversation with him today. He is a national award winning actor, a Bollywood actor who's been working in this industry for more than 26 years. He's done more than 200 films across 11 languages and it's an absolute proud moment for me to talk to someone who I've been a fan of, uh, you know, from my growing up years and uh, introducing Mr. Ashish Vidyarthi. Thank you. And uh, congratulations, Nidhika. Thank you. Congratulations on your debut, something which you dreamt of and today you are bringing to fruition. Very happy to be here. And it's my absolute honor, sir, to have you with us because it's like a dream come true for me. I have no words <coughs> to explain. Appreciate it. So, so you know, just um, to kind of begin a conversation here, Ashish, you, when I announced your name as our guest, a lot of people came back to me in the comments uh, and they said that, you know, um, does Ashish Vidharthi have a comeback? And um, some people even called me on that. And I had this question in my head that, you know, why is it that people, when they see somebody being so successful or they see that, you know, somebody um, is doing well for themselves, you know, 200 films across 11 languages is not a joke. National award winning actors is, is not easy. But yet people have this thinking about, uh, you know, about the fact that maybe this person got lucky or maybe he got it easy. So they never really think that 
a person could have gone through a lot of down times to achieve that kind of success or they may have had uh, some defining moments in their life which could have completely changed the trajectory of their life so would you like to share something from your life which mostly for people would be like something like a shocker or something that could have been a defining moment for you in your life so uh, first things first uh, to break uh, a few myths yes. uh, actors life is filled with comebacks we are continuously and ongoingly recreating ourselves yes. and uh, I, I've, I've been no different I've been I realized this in life that uh, like roles as we play uh, actors are continuously and ongoingly uh, trying to redefine themselves <clears throat> and one of the critical things that's very important for an actor especially anybody who is recognized as somebody who is uh, successful is the ability to deal with the downtime yeah. because uh, downtime is something which really uh, you know, it, it sucks away from you and kind of, um, uh, you know, it's like a parasite which eats into you. But more dangerous is the fear of the downtime. Yes. The fear of the downtime happens when, when we are at the top of our game. And, you know, we, we know that it won't last for too long. Okay, so people that, you know, who have achieved something, they're continuously in that uh, zone. And that makes, uh, makes people, uh, you know, a behavior changes and stuff happens to their heads. And I think it's a very critical time and a critical, critical time in life nowadays because uh, today, uh, what Andy Warhol spoke of, that people have those two and a half minutes of fame. People are having much more time of fame thanks to social media. Yes. So it's, it's critical that people manage their heads and how they relate to uh, success, failure, or, um, or anticipated success or anticipated failure. So, Ashiji, I remember when you were offered Daya Shankar Ki Diary, you know, that was a time in your life which was like, I, from what I've heard from my theater days, mm. you know, that it was life-changing for you, just yeah. getting that role. Mm. Would you like to throw some light on that? Well, Daya Shankar Ki Diary came at a, came at a very, uh, uh, if I may say, if put it very lightly, at a very, uh, very dicey part in my life in which I was really down and out and, uh, 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 you know, really didn't see hope and, and that, that's, the, that's the interesting part, is that we put too much stress on the design that we have done, what we have done, how, what we have caused. I really think that if you, if you can really ask out and you know, ask for some extraordinary things to happen to you, they do happen. And uh, I was very lucky that at that point of time when uh, I was going through an, uh, a terrible emotional crisis and uh, a crisis in terms of my career, uh, Daya Shankar was offered to me thanks to uh, Nadiraji, Nadira Zahir Babbar. <clears throat> and, and that opened up many things for me in my life. What I really got at that point was that before that, um, whenever I had down times, and there were a lot of down times even before that, right. right from school days, college days, and there on NSD days and post that. But at that point, I really got that what really mattered is uh, not necessarily people around understanding your downtime. Right. What's critical is that you got to make your way through the downtime. And uh, uh, I think a, a, an important part for people to realize is that, you know, we, f uh, we feel sorry for ourselves and we wallow in, um, you know, a lot, of, uh, yes. uh, a lot of things where we feel really sorry for ourselves and we are in grief and then we think that we are so good, why aren't people and the world understanding? But let's get it absolutely straight. The world has no compulsion. There's no reason for world to be, you know, any which way other than how it is. And it's critical for us to realize that we have to make our way through that downtime. And I really think that that downtime, I don't wish it on anyone, but that downtime has taught me the most. It has allowed me to become bigger than what, what I ever thought I was. And it, it, it was a time in which I, was, I felt completely alone. You know, trust me, completely alone. Some of the very close friends, people who were very, very close to me, uh, for whatever reason, they felt that, uh, you know, uh, whatever reason, they kind of weren't, they disappeared, they weren't around. Yes. And what was phenomenal about me, and, and that's, that's what I want to get, is that I managed to do that time without, um, without feeling hurt without feeling upset, what I really got that if I felt hurt and upset, I would just vitiate the atmosphere that I was in. 
And uh, thanks to that play, thanks to that, thanks to my uh, opportunity that I got, I dived into that character. And it was a very, very difficult thing to do. I'm, I'm a single actor playing for one and a half hours and creating that play in that uh, right. phase of time. So I really think that uh, an opportunity for people is not to be scared of failure, but the willingness to deal with it. And you said emotional crisis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, if it's okay for you, would you like to share with the audience what exactly was happening in your life at that time? So, so the point here is not, I mean, uh, the, the details of that emotional crisis, uh, you know, uh, they need not be uh, illustrated. But what really matters is that I was feeling down and out. I was ready to die at that moment, uh, to put it very, um, you know, to put it in a very straight way. Now, dying, we sometimes, when it exists as an anecdote, you know, it, it is like, it's like a, it's like an anecdote. But when it is happening at that point, right. you know, you feel that all doors are shut. Yeah, there, there is, no there is, there is no hope and you've gone through that. Yes. And uh, so the interesting part here is that for a creative pe uh, set of people, um, and I, because I'm, I'm in that field and I understand that, uh, we, we are really passionate about a lot of things. Yes. And when we are passionate, it consumes us. And that what makes us shine also makes us really dark, you know, really scared. And, and that those dark corners of our uh, life which become even darker. Right. And the point is not to wallow in self-pity. Right. The point of that point is that to really go ahead and create and because we have, I, I had this wonderful guru, Pandit Satyadev Dubey, and he told me, <laughs> so you know, he, he, I, I was really blessed by people who, who never, you know, they never gave me that shoulder to cry on. They really said that if you are in it, it is your business to make your way out of it. And, and, and that, I think, is, is the critical part in life. That if you see dark times, wade your way through it. Right. At the same time, look after yourself. So I, I made sure in, in that dark period of time when I was uh, you know, in that state, I said I, I will not take any substance. I used to take a lot of, I used to love alcohol. And I remember for that entire three-year period, I completely abstained from it because I said I have to be at the top of my game right. while dealing with that scenario. So there are certain calls that we need to make. Um, a couple of things that come to our mind and I would love to share with people who are listening in. First, really taking care of yourself because at that point of time, uh, you need to be loved by yourself because when we are down and out, we start hating ourselves because we are the easiest target for ourselves. We never let people know that, but we hurt ourselves. So the first thing is to really take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be around people who, uh, who don't increase your anger. So I remember in that time, I made sure that I wouldn't be around people who in the guise of, uh, you know, being my friends would increase my anger towards the person, right. uh, you know, I'm upset with. So it is very important that you actually see a future in which there is hope in life. Yeah. There is, this life is an extraordinary opportunity. So if we have belief in that, then it will allow us to tide over that period. Right. So, so do you feel that, um, you know, in, in that point in time, it's always better to surround yourself with people who are going to lift you up rather than who are going to pull you down? Yeah, and the, the, the <laughs> so, so fairy tales are not always uh, fairy filled. <laughs> Uh, so at that point of time, there weren't so many people around. So one had to one had to develop one's own force field. Right. And and uh, for me, um, uh, that play, therefore, Daya Shankar and Ekjot and working with Nadiraji was an extraordinary opportunity because here were a set of people who knew what I was going through. Yet what we are there was to just deliver that play, and therefore it was uh, you, you're with a set of professionals who are believing in artistic excellence and uh, you know you, you don't have scope to just be upset you have to right. go and deliver and the audience is waiting and the most phenomenal thing about audiences which i love is they're unforgiving <laughs> and i love it you know you know they they, they kind of are very straight with you yes and as an actor that is uh, that is something we love to live with you know we we live dangerously right. we live we live in the eyes of the you know in the midst of people who are looking at us and yet, uh, uh, we we try to create something. So we are we are spectacular successes, and we are spectacular failures. Many a times, uh, the audience would not be realizing it, but the artist 
is at times feeling extremely successful and at times feeling extremely despondent, you know, that we are not getting what we really want to do. Right. And in between that is that trail of that, that artist and the work that we create. And it is, trust me, it is an ongoing thing. I am, after so many films and whatever that you read out about me, I am an actor who's hungry, yeah. who's trying to create phenomenal roles for myself, all right? And um, uh, so, I, so I had a choice, you know, some years back I had a choice. So do I sit at home and just keep waiting for the roles? Or do I step out and do something with my life? So it was a very interesting phase, uh, when, 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 I, when I got that about 17 years back, I was working a whole lot, lot in uh, the south of India, I and mean, I started working in languages other than Hindi. Right. I had a lot of time with myself. And I said that this is, you know, I'm away from home, I really want to be home. I'm away from home, I'm away from my child, whom I really want to be with. And I said that after I get back home, after each of my schedules, uh, do I, does an upset, irritated, angry father and a husband should come home? Or should there be somebody who realizes that he needs to be away right. for whatever that he needs to do. And a happy person is back. Yes. And that is where avid minor conversations were born. Right. All right? Because it, is, it, it was created inside of conversations that I had with myself. That can I be extraordinary in the midst of what life was throwing at me? Or should I just wait for amazing things to happen for me and then be extraordinary? Fair enough. So tell me something, you know, in between, as you mentioned, the in-between times, yeah. right? I mean, if, if we read about you, <coughs> um, you know, you're an actor, you're a motivational speaker, you're a blogger, you're a photographer. So what was your inspiration to, you know, keep adapting to these different roles? Yeah. So, so in a way, if I can put it very simply, um, adaptation is, 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 is the key to life. Adaptation keeps us relevant. Adaptation allows us to... Um, to stay relevant, yes. you know, it, it, it allows you to be in sync with and, and it is about calibrating yourself continuously. Yes. So I started off as a theatre actor in Delhi, uh, Hindi theatre actor, then moved to Bombay and started acting in um, art films, you know, Dhrokal and Israt Ki Subay Nahi and won a national award for that. But very soon at that point I discovered that even though my passion was there, uh, there was nothing coming out of it. Right. And I had to feed my parents. And I was absolutely clear about that. So when people say that, uh, as an actor, uh, why do you want to be an actor? And of course, people love the answer that I want to do those amazing roles, etc. That's all true. But uh, what is paramount for me was to feed my parents. And I, I got for me one very critical thing, and I want to share that, right. is that if I have passion, I can come back and create some amazing roles. But my parents cannot be fed tomorrow. Yeah. They have to be fed today. And therefore, those choices were made. Yeah. Were they painful? Very. Trust me, very. But uh, I stand by my choices. I stand by the fact that I did the films that I did. And life at different points is only about choices. I, I feel great when I meet some people who are doing some extraordinary work. All right, I, I say hats off to you. Right. But I say that I did what I best could choose to do. Okay. And, and so therefore, that, there lies life. Life is not about it being fair or unfair. Life is what you do with the cards that are handed to you. Right. And, uh, and, and that's, that's the freedom in life, having the ability to um, take responsibility. A lot of people will say, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why didn't you do that? And why did you do this? The matter is not that. The matter is I did this and I stand by it. And I will make the most of it. And that's how I started even chatting with people because I realized that a lot of people, a lot of us here out there listening, you know, a lot of us do not exactly want to do what we are doing and we are really upset about it, isn't it? But, you know, guys, you are the best judges of what you're doing. So it's really an opportunity for us not just to wait one day to be happy, but really to be happy right now doing what you do. At the same time, keep your eyes on that target. Okay, so if I am an extraordinary actor, I'm waiting for that extraordinary set of roles to happen. My eyes are there, but I will not just wait for those roles to happen. I will create something extraordinary during that wait. Right. And that's, I think, what you mentioned yes. about that blog article that yes. I read. 
what do you do while you're waiting? Yes, yes, while you're waiting. So, you know, I mean, as an actor, I'm sure you've dealt with a lot of um, feedback because I think somehow <coughs> when somebody wants to become an actor, they always say that needs to be fair skin mm. and traditionally good looking, which in the mind of the world, you know, did you have any challenges with your, with your skin color or any of those feedbacks that you got? Yeah, except, uh, <coughs> except it was not called feedback. <laughs> you were just called that name. I was called Kalu. Really? Regularly called Kalu. And a very dear friend of mine used to call me Jallad. I think he's listening and I won't, <laughs> I won't give his name. So, so here is what it is. You know, there's this whole lot of sound that people make that don't call people by the color. It's, it's like this. Let's face it. Yeah. People have issues with color. <laughs> you don't let them talk about it. They're anywhere going to feel it. What I feel is that if you can take the sting out of that word, I don't care if anybody calls me Kalu. I don't care. Did it hurt me? Of course it did. But didn't stop me. Right. The question here is this. The question is not to tape the mouths who's saying, who are saying what they're saying. It's to work the, on your mindset. Exactly, to get your mindset. People will say what they will say. Yeah. People will say obnoxious thing, what they think are obnoxious. <laughs> I turned it around. And I'm sure many of us here have turned things around. You know, people have commented about the way you look, what you have, the things you wear how you look, it doesn't matter. Yeah, body okay? shaming is a big challenge, yeah, especially in schools with universities, with college students. Yeah. If yeah. you're too fat, it's a problem. If you're too thin, it's a problem. Yeah. If you're dark, it's a problem. If you're too fair, it's a problem. Yeah, it's the, a problem. And the, the, my, my question is that, is the problem in speaking out or somebody shouting out or is the problem in listening? Mm. I've always felt that the problem is in listening. Do I go through it? Of course I go through it. Right. You tell me I'm fat, I like had it. In fact, I'm insisting that keep, please keep it short. I should look. <laughs> Throughout my life, I've been overweight, man. Uh, I mean, I've really been trying very, very hard not to be. But I'm always in the process. But I got one thing very interesting, and this probably could make sense. It's not a question whether you're proud of the way your bo body is. Right. Can you be okay with how your body is? Absolutely. And work on it. Absolutely. For example, can I be okay with my texture of my skin, the, the way my hair looks, how tall I am? Okay. Now, this is where the critical thing happens for each one of us. And I think that's something which will be of value. Consider our dreams, our passion, if they don't, if they don't, if they are not limited by the way we look, yeah. by, by what people say about us. That is where freedom is. Freedom is where in spite of what the world is saying, in spite of everything, we just go on and deliver what we promised we will. Absolutely. I, I always tell people, you know, that when my social media posts go out, I'm the first one to like my posts. And once I happened to be talking to my social media team and they said that, you know, um, you know, don't uh, don't be the first one to do it, let other people do it. And yeah. I was like, I am my favorite too. So <laughs> I'm definitely going to like yeah. my posts first. Because if you believe in what you do, <clears throat> you got to be your biggest fan. I mean, I believe in that, uh, yeah. you know, if you are your biggest fan, you don't need one. Mm. And if you don't need one, because you cannot please everybody all the time. Sure. So you have a set of audience that you want to please. Mm -hmm. But tell me, as an actor, when you're on the set, you know, there are different you know, levels of actors, there's a hero, there's a villain, and you know, there are other um, actors who contribute to the film. So is there any kind of discrimination that happens on the set regarding that or anything that, you know, somebody from an actor's point of view would feel uh, differently or is there a benchmark of status or something like that? Sure. There is. Welcome to life. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody sitting there, somebody sitting here, not somebody else. Right. Welcome to life. In fact, I think you're referring to my blog. Yes, the Bislery blog. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so, so there is a twist to that. Okay. So this this particular blog is about how important status is for each one of us. Right. So the particular anecdote that I've referred to there is that as we began uh, our journey as an actor in in Bombay, right. uh, the thing was that on a film set, who will get the bottle of Bislery? It is a huge thing. And now it's yeah, it was like some people got the bislery, other people got the opened bottle of bislery, which was some other kind. Right. And did it matter? Yes, it did. Trust me, there were fights for it. We felt small if the bislery wasn't wow. offered. The point that I was making in that article was that <clears throat> in a few years' time, the bislery was being offered. But now some other, le some other symbol of status had taken up. Right. This is the key for each one of us. For each one of us at different points in life, there are certain status symbols we really want us to have. You know, guess what? Not for us. It's for <laughs> others to think, what kind of a car does he drive? Correct. Where does he live? You know, what is the kind of dress that she wears? Yeah. What is this? You know, 
anything. Very so true. it is that vanity which comes in, which we try and fulfill right. for others. And that's the millstone. Yeah. And especially as an actor, I realize that, you know, I love, I love food. I love to go and eat anywhere. You know, I just, just love. And it's so interesting that when somebody sees you, and that person is there at that interesting dhaba, and I'm that there, and that person will look up and say, Hare haap idhar ka? <laughs> so, am I supposed to say, uh, No, I'm sorry, the car is bad, so I'm here. And can I say, boss, you're also here. You know? True. So the thing here is that the celebrity is the millstone. Right. It's not the garland, it's the millstone people Weighing give us. You, down. you know, they, they give yeah. it to us and then we love it. Yeah. Because we always wanted to be a celebrity, <laughs> so we wear it. And then we wear dark glasses in dark rooms, okay, <laughs> just less if anybody kind of... So the celebrity thing has to be, you know, that has to be disrupted by the celebrity. You know? So 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 that is when, um, you know, people will suddenly say, <laughs> how come you, as in like, why can't I? So, so... As we downplay, and that's yes. the critical part for each one of us who has achieved a little bit something, and we are known, uh, we may be known in our office, in our area, in our locality, um, in your profession, just watch out. That celebrity hood that we have gotten, uh, is it making us tentative? Is it making us scared of others? Is it making us feel scared that the thing may go away? That weighs us down. On the other hand, if we can be normal, I mean, like uber normal, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's phenomenal. You get to make friends. I get to make, make so many friends wherever I am. And, and, uh, and therefore, the, the, the entire game is to disrupt that game of status. Right. Allow people to see, see the quality of our work, whatever that we are doing. Right. Not, the, not, the, you know, not the paraphernalia which is around us. Yeah. And that's what makes really life impactful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for saying that. But I have a very critical question of you. You know, so you, we are talking about adaptation. You said, you know, yeah. you're always about adaptation. I think one of the biggest challenges that we are dealing with right now as a society is artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are scared as to what it may mean for them, you know, whether they'll be. So a lot of people are actually working on creating some projects. Mm -hmm. They know that once they are done with it, they'll be losing their jobs, right? So, yeah, so there is a lot of anxiety around that. And I, I believe you did, you know, I heard you speak on one of your YouTube videos uh, yeah. talking about Aarti versus Ma. So I, was, uh, I would really love it if you would, you know, throw some light on that. And what do you feel? Um, you know, artificial intelligence in the context of adaptation, how is it all going to play out for all of us? <coughs> so artificial intelligence for me is uh, nothing but a changing landscape. So as opposed to a fixed landscape. So artificial land, um, intelligence is something that no one knows anything about. You know, anything that you want to be careful about, you say, remember, artificial AI is going to come. <laughs> AI is going to do that. So AI is the big boogie person, boogie yeah. thing. So for me, AI can be anything which is coming up in the future, which I'm not ready for. Yes. Consider that is where the key is. So for each one of us human beings, anything which is predictive is going to go away. That's Somebody true. is going to do it for us. So already true. the calculators and the computers are doing quite a yes. bit of stuff. But the interesting part is that if we can remain interesting, if we can do creative stuff, if we can be naughty, if we can do wild things, something which are not predicted, which are not, uh, which, which you're not meant to. Ah, yeah, yeah, I know that you do that. Consider, there is nothing called, I know that you did that. So I, I yes, last summer I went to that hotel. Can I completely choose a different thing this year? Okay. Yes. So that is that ability to surprise oneself. More than being, um, um, you know, like being ready for AI or the future, I think it's imperative that each one of us are ready to surprise ourselves. Lovely. Because AI that is not used to surprising. Yes. AI is only going to do things that have been done before. Very true. And I think as each one of us ongoingly uh, go beyond the predictable, yes. that's what's exciting. So for example, if I may share, that when six years back, I said that I would love to go out and talk to corporates and talk to organizations and create a whole new future in which I'm a communicator because I love to communicate. Right. So I, um, so my earlier movement was from Delhi to Bombay to, 
to 10 other languages. So here, I continue acting, yet I have opened another avenue for myself. Is it scary? It's very scary. But that's the joy. At least I'm not doing something that my mind predicted I will. Is it dangerous? Of course it is dangerous. But that's the joy of life. Because we can either predictably fail or we can be unpredictable and be successful. Okay, so that's a that's a, thought, that's a key thing. Yeah. So, you know, just uh, on that note as well, because our education system, the way it's currently designed, you know, <coughs> it's, it's designed um, in terms of helping people, uh, you know, get, it basically trains you in science of achievement, not necessarily in art of fulfillment. Mm. And uh, one of the biggest challenges that, you know, people will have, as you said, with artificial intelligence coming in is their creativity skills going up, mm. which is not necessarily the prerogative of any schooling system. So do you feel that a change in the way schooling is done will also have to be impacted to be in times with, because, you know, just from a point of view of a motivational speaker and a father, mm. do you feel there's a different way of upbringing we need to give our children today so that they can adapt more easily to the times? Mm. So there are two different aspects to it, and I would love to share these two aspects, and they're very close to me. One is, <clears throat> what is the, how important is success? and how dangerous is failure. So consider each one of us each day. We are in this game called creating success. Yeah. All right? How will it be even as we are creating success, we are not weighed by it. Mm. We can be light about it. Yes. Playing for it, playing really well for it, but not counting on it. This is something where the schools can do something, or should I say, thinking can do something about that even as we are playing bigger games to really be very very successful which I promise you I am and I know that you are I know that each one of you is but success or waiting for success or the degree of success that you think you are that weighs us down and if people really get and that is where the the aspirational things come up you know people look at a car and they say wow I need that car. If I get that car, I'm successful. Yeah. If I don't get that car, I am successful. Yeah. My father didn't have that, so he's not successful. My mother didn't have that, so therefore they are not successful. Right. So aspiration, you know, when we, when we see something and we want it, and when we don't have it, we feel we are a loser. When we have it, we get arrogant. That's the issue. On the other hand, what really inspires me is the word being inspired. Consider you can be inspired by somebody who's got far less or far more than what you have. But there's something about that person <clears throat> that you say that, you know, she has something which, which really I would want included in my life. Yes. And I could be a teacher, I could be a scientist, I could be an entrepreneur, I could be a cyclist, and I could learn from a restauranter, or I could learn from a, 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 a tailor, I could learn from anyone. anyone so inspiration, I think, is the key. And I think that's going back to uh, the theory which I call the theory of the best. Yes. When we can take the best of the East and the best of the West. So best of the East, if, I, if we look at India as the East, is in our thought, we said that don't let success and failure bother you. Bother, yeah. One of the phenomenal things about West, work for your success. <laughs> so if we can have the best of both, working for it but not taking it seriously, seriously. that I think can be a phenomenal mix which schools and, you know, future thinking can be all about. Awesome. That's such a beautiful thought. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, you know, it's, we've been at it for a while, but, you know, no talk show is complete without the rapid fire round. Ah. So I'm going to pull you into one. <laughs> and uh, I'm a fan of Karan Johar, so you know where it's all coming from. <laughs> so I'm going to, you know, the, you know the rules, right? I'm going to shoot a question and you're going to come back with a rapid fire answer, which is at best a statement or a phrase, okay. or a word, whichever way you like it, Oof. okay? <laughs> awesome, hate all right, it. shall we go with it? I hate it. <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna love the questions. <laughs> <laughs> These are not the regular funny ones, okay? they are based on life, so I'm sure you'll oh, admire those. <laughs> all right, so shall we? Go awesome. for it. Okay, what is the one thing essential to living a balanced life? Passion. What are the top five priorities in your life? Family, travel, friends, uh, photography, writing, chatting. Okay, at six. Awesome. Six. <laughs> Do you think a person needs to first overcome serious setbacks or challenges to be truly successful? 
No, no, you needn't do any one of them. You can just keep hoping that uh, no setback happens, but they will happen. Okay, fair enough. What is the greatest lesson you've learned? Harkat keep moving. Keep moving, lovely. Is it important to do what you love or love what you do? Keep loving what you do because that's the choice that you have. Keep loving what you do. Oh, lovely. What would you do if you found out you had only 24 hours to live? Do exactly what I'm doing right now. Wow. which is doing whatever that I said I will do. Wow. If you could pick a single superpower, what would it be and why? The ability to travel. Really? Yeah, just <laughs> like, just like, <laughs> I'm at Machu Picchu. Because I hate trekking and I want to go to Machu Picchu. <laughs> okay, cool. I would never dare trek. <laughs> if you could live the life of any movie character, mm. who would you have, who would you choose? Uh, Probably that dinosaur who didn't get killed. <laughs> Seriously? Was there a in Jurassic, was there a one dinosaur who didn't get killed? Yeah, they, wow, that they guy was see. powerful and didn't die. Wow. <laughs> would love to live that. Okay. Would you rather lose all of your money in valuables or all of the pictures you've ever taken? No, no. The pictures are saved. I don't want to lose the money. In Google <laughs> Photos, okay. fo pictures are saved. I don't want to lose them. All money. right. Yes, if please. you found a way to time travel, where would you go? I think we suppose, where would I go? I would go all over. Yes, the couple of places which I really, Machu Picchu is one of them. I want to see some parts of Tibet. I, I, I want to go to Mongolia. Uh, I want to go to um, Angkor Wat. Uh, many, many places. Okay. The time machine will really be used. The, the traveling machine will be yeah? used. Yes. <laughs> okay. If you could change one thing in history, what would it be? Hmm. Yeah. One thing. If I could, uh, if, if people really got that, uh, it's again a wish list. If people got that, amazing people can be amazingly successful. Wow, mm. awesome. Thank you, you did well. You got to give me a high five on that one. Okay. Awesome, lovely. <laughs> okay, so now we've got some, a bit of surprise. We're going to play a game. The game is called Jinx. And what happens in this game is that we're going to read out some words. And both of us are going to be playing this game. So when the word is spoken out by me, we have three seconds to think of the first word that comes to our mind when we hear that word. Okay. And after three seconds, the bell would ring, which sounds like that. And we have to, I know, divine, universal intervention. Yeah. So, and we have to say the word that comes to our mind. And if we both get the same word, then we do a high five and we say jinx. Jinx. Yes. Got it. Okay. Let's awesome. go over it. All right. So the first thing that comes to your mind, or the first word that comes to your mind when I say the following. Life. Celebration. Celebra <laughs> celebration, okay. Jinx. One awesome. second, did you say celebration or celibate? Celebration. Thank you. <laughs> I was in between when you completed it and I was like, oh my God, okay. Should we do one more time, the same one? Let's go okay, for it. Okay, let's go for it, okay? It was our first time, so we yeah. didn't get it right in the third second. Okay. No, but, but we got it right. Yeah, but jinx, just, right? I didn't complete it. I want to complete it. Okay, complete all right. It, okay? okay, okay. So, life. Celebration. Oh, celebration. You gotta the, do it after the bell. Oh gosh, like yes. I'm, I'm like, I'm, am, I, am I going before the bell? Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. Let's get this right okay. this time. Yeah, let's go for it, okay? Life. Celebration! We got it right. <laughs> yeah, fine. Thank God. Okay. Oh, God. On All cue. right. Okay. Word number two. Purpose. Transformation. Trans oh, no. No? <laughs> it was for me something else. So, sorry. We don't get to jinx. Okay. We don't get okay, to jinx. Okay. Got it. Third word. Marriage. Co-creation. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, word number four. Failure. Opportunity. Opportunity. Oh, jinx. Awesome. All right. Yeah, How okay. did you know that? <laughs> How did you know the right answer? I know, you can imagine. I don't know. I think it's, it's the same for everyone. It should be ideally. I think but when you go super down duper. in life, you know that that's super your duper. biggest opportunity. Super duper, absolutely. Yeah? It's that moment. Awesome. Next one. Sure. Competition. Healthy. And non existent. Non existent, okay. Non -existent. Cool. Not, okay. All right, the next one. Can I, get, can I quickly share a take on this? Yes, competition? please, please. You know, competition is something which we beat ourselves with, we beat others with. Uh, you know, we say, let's get competitive. Nobody cares about competition. <laughs> Have you ever considered that 100 meters runner who's running really fast and that guy who's coming second, this guy is only think about, thinking about running faster. Yeah. This competition is a thing that we, you know, we kind of pull on others, push on our, ourselves. 
and, and, and really tired. It's, it's very boring. The point here is, let's excel. It's nothing to do. Somebody's gotten a role, I haven't gotten a role. It is nothing to do with competition. It's just that that person got that role, I got this role. Got it. Similarly, if somebody gets something, it doesn't mean somebody lost. It just means somebody got it. Does it mean that we will not excel? Yes, we will continue to excel. But it's nothing to do with anybody else. My take. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And the reason I said the word healthy is because coming from the spirit of healthy Makes competition, sense. absolutely, it's it, taking inspiration from competition and growing yourself continuously. Sahi jawab. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, so we have three more words to go. Let's go with it. Money. Tool. Tool. Oh! <laughs> Just a tool to buy things. Absolutely. Nothing Absolutely. else. Yes. Yeah. Super. Let's In buy fact, some things. In uh, fact, Google defines it um, mm. that it's the current form of currency notes and coins used as a medium of exchange. You know. So that's it's the, the take on it is just for <laughs> money. Makes sense. All right. Awesome. Second last word. Relationships. Cheers. Potential. Cheers. <laughs> okay. All right. And the last word is love. Family. Love. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Remember, for, for I family, did, I said love. Yeah, I know. So it kind of just, I know, so <laughs> but, it's like, But yeah, right, so it was okay, cross drinks right. anyway, yep, yep, so yep, we yep, enjoyed yep, that. Yep, yep. Awesome, thank you. And what we're going to do now, uh, Ashish Ji is going to take some questions from the audience. Okay. And they're going to get, so we'll have about three or four questions we'll take. And the best question that you like at the end of the show, you tell us and we announce the winner, is going to get an autographed mug by both of us. How cool is that? Okay, so can we have the questions? I see Naresh Mohanty, Rizwana, Rodawala, Bikram Jeet Singh, Chima. All right, that seems some nice things. So, do we have any questions? Or koi sawari nahi? That's how I guess situation is. Sawari nahi. Awesome. All right, so, we, we have a questions. magic wand that's come to us. All right. All right. Let me just check this. People are very excited to have you here. So there are a lot of lovely comments. Okay, there is a question. Sometimes we tend to feel guilty and bash up ourselves as we keep trying, but things don't happen. And sometimes we tend to hate ourselves and then it becomes difficult to come back to. What's your take on it? Yeah, it's kind of, you know, first of all, in your mind, there is nothing called a comeback, just to kind of, just to kind of let you know. Comeback is meant for the critic, the person who's watching. For you, for each one of us, it's just what we are doing in that, on that day. And uh, really, uh, it's very, very important. In fact, my recent LinkedIn post was about it. Don't weigh yourself down with very heavy things. Keep it light. Uh, let critics decide that you're going through a terrible phase, and yet that person's made a comeback. Trust me, any one of us who has done something, gone through something and come out, we have allowed ourselves not to be weighed by that scenario. So you don't work on your comeback. All that you need to do is to work spectacularly that day and the next day and the next day. Because one thing is absolutely clear. Life is neither fair nor unfair. Life is just about delivering results. There may be times when we are not delivering the kind of results that we want to, but don't give up. If those results are possible, we will deliver. I will deliver. So will you. So will you? Yes. <laughs> Go for it. Awesome. So that was a question from Gavin. And now we have a question from a gentleman called Omkar. And he says, ask, what inspired you to become a motivational speaker? Uh, what inspired me is uh, I wanted to deal with myself. It's, it's very critical. Uh, uh, so everything that I speak is something which I'm dealing with myself. It's not, it's not uh, something which I've read and I've heard of. It is something which I apply on myself. And I really think that gives me great pleasure that if I can contribute to somebody else. So as an actor, I really, uh, you know, reached out and so many people loved me across, uh, you know, across regions all over India. And that's really a special feeling. But I get an extraordinary feeling when, when, when I can make a difference to somebody's life. Because I really think that there is one life of ours. Each one of us has one life. Do we face um, uh, kind of breakdowns? Of course we do face breakdowns. But is it possible for us to make something extraordinary out of our life? Because our life, at the end of it, is not just about ourselves. Our families are connected. 
our friends and relatives are connected and our contribution to life itself is connected. So I thought that how will it be if I can share with people, you know, how I'm just going on and creating something uh, afresh and I'm not a super person, I'm just a normal person really given to upsets, jealousies, rage and, and you know, and, and really not feeling great so many days. But yet, if I can see a better tomorrow possible, that's what I want to share with people. And the rhetorical question. When are we going to see you on the big screen again? You're seeing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll just tell you, the next, uh, next one, I don't know what you call it. Maybe it's in fact, on 25th, uh, we are doing a, uh, 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 there's something called Kahani Baz, which is Ooh, on, on uh, Ghana. Uh, dot com and uh, we've just uh, made it into a film, the first film that is going to be released this 25th uh, uh, in a couple of days. Wow. And other than that, I have uh, releases which are coming up in different languages. You will come to know at different times. Awesome. And that was a question from Yash. Now we have, should we take one more or two more? Most welcome. One more is good. From Abhijit Telang, he says, what was the most difficult situation you had to adapt to? Each time, you know, trust me, each situation when it comes up, it becomes a huge one. Uh, for me, if I may say, the time when I started mo working in, in Tamil cinema uh, for the first time, when I stepped out of the comfort of speaking uh, Hindi and working in another language, it, in, in fact, it started with the Kannada film. But I remember these large passages that I had to speak in Tamil, and it was, it was really very challenging because before that, we were working on our diction, how we spoke, so we had worked on Hindi and the languages that we used to act in. But guess what? I came into a language which I did not know. So I had to really, uh, you know, really feel the scare of how can I do it and then adapt and find new ways of, you know, expressing myself. So uh, now today, uh, I, I only speak three of the 11 languages that I work in. But uh, trust me, it's amazing when people say that, you know, I know that you speak that language because I've seen your lip, it's perfect. So that's a great thing. So that was a huge challenge to work outside of a language that I knew. Mm. Yeah. Fabulous. I'm going to take one last question. Yeah, I, 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 I like that question of Nasir Khan. Yeah, I was it's, actually yeah, going to go for it. That is Jinx. Jinx. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> so Nasir Khan, incidentally, I know mm. is from Bangalore and he wants to know how not to give up on your dream. So Nasir, this is one thing which is very, very dear to me and close to me. And I think not only is it dear to you, but it's dear to each one of us. Uh, our dreams are much too valuable to give up. In fact, the book that uh, I'm writing, which is going to come up in the next few months, is called The Second Half. Mm. And the second half is about all the dreams that we uh, have left unfulfilled up till date. And it's critical that those dreams that you and I have seen we have to fulfill. Now, there's a critical difference. These are not dreams that we saw when we were sleeping. These were dreams that we caused when we were awake. So they are worth it to be fulfilled. So it's up to us to fulfill our dreams, right? Absolutely. In fact, uh, very interesting you say that because when I was writing this book, the initial, the first name that came to my mind was Second Innings, ah. which comes from the same spirit. And then yeah. we later decided to name it the Queen of the Comeback. I'm so happy. So it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so before we end today's show, Ashishji, one final piece of advice or a statement or a closing statement you'd like to say to our audience. So, Nadika, I'm first of all very, very happy to be here Thank on you. your first uh, edition of this uh, thing. Uh, your story is very, very inspiring. And it's Thank inspiring you. because for each one of us, uh, there will be moments in which we feel completely down and out and finished. And not only are we feeling down and out and finished, other people are saying that you're down and out and finished. Yes. And uh, these are stories which let us know that if we want to make something out of our life, it is up to us. So uh, don't fritter away the life. Life is much too precious to fritter away with substances or, or doing things that you don't want to do. Very, very critical part is the next one thing that I'm going to say. Invest. Invest wisely. And when I, what I'm saying, asking you to invest in our friendships. Because I think that those amazing friendships and the friends that you develop around you, they will be in your vicinity when you're hit. You can reach out to them. Yeah. So be very, very choosy in the friends that you make. 
uh, don't, don't make friends just because they are saying things that you like. Nindak Nere Rakhi have amazing friends who are, who, yeah, can, who, can, who can point out mm -hmm. things to you and uh, wish you an extraordinary life as you light up not just your life but lives around you. Thank you so much, Ashley Ji, for joining us today. But I have a little present for you. Oh, wow. I hope you like it. I will. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, we need to sign the, the cup. Which sure. one? Sure. Which one? Anyone is good? Anyone? Okay. So yours first. All right. Here goes. It's got... All right, so... Who's going to get this? You have to choose from all the questions you answered. Which was your favorite question? I love the dream one. The dream one? So yeah. Nasir Khan it is. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You were a much better handwriting than me. <laughs> Not at all. I have a tiny mm. scribble which looks like Chinese for some reason. <laughs> well, uh, thank you Ashish Ji for being Pleasure. with us. Pleasure. And Nasir Khan, you're going to get this uh, you know cup sent to you so do send in uh, send your e the postal address to us in the comment section it's coming for you right away and thank you everyone for watching us do leave us your comments and let us know how you enjoyed this show and also let us know uh, what are the kind of people you'd like to see on this show who are the people in your mind that you'd love to hear from and learn from and grow with uh, on this show but before we go I want to point out two things to you a that we're talking about uh, you know I'm sure you all know that Kerala is dealing with a lot of challenges and since this is a comeback show as part of the show we want to raise some funds for Kerala and we have a campaign running called help Kerala make a comeback which is in association with Habitat India which is which I believe is one of the fantastic uh, NGOs which works in the places of building communities rebuilding homes for people so please support us we'll be sharing the link on the Facebook page in a while and you know we just would love you to support and do anything uh, you know any contribution is good contribution even if it's 500 rupees 100 rupees thousand whatever it is that comes from your heart that you're willing to give away fully and joyfully please do put in go to the link and uh, make the payment there so that we can support Kerala as a part of this show. So thank you so much uh, everybody for watching and we would not, if you don't want to miss out on any shows, what you want to do is subscribe to this uh, show right away and keep watching this space as we bring to you our next guest which I'm sure is going to be as rocking as Ashish Ji. So keep holding uh, the space here for us and stay tuned and do leave us your comments. Love you guys. Thank you very much.